Dan Perry here, and continuing our TCPIP basics, uh, part 19 is the second part of our OSI model uh, lectures or tutorials. Uh, here we're going to actually describe the layers. In the previous video, we just listed those layers. Now, at the top, that layer 7 is our application layer. The application layer communicates with your actual applications. It's not an application in itself, as many people think, but what it does is it allows us to communicate with our applications. So as you're working in Word or Excel, PowerPoint, something like that, and you hit save, and you want to save it to a network drive, it will interface with that program. When, when you uh, request something, say from the web or from a network drive, that again interfaces, the application layer interfaces with that program that is trying to get that data. Uh, and then <clears throat> when the data comes back, the data is returned from the application layer to that layer. Now, the presentation layer, and the name I, I really think is bad because people think presentation is how it looks on the screen. The presentation layer handles the way data is formatted and transferring and changing the formatting of data if the data is coming from Excel say to be saved it is formatted properly for saving if it's coming from the hard drive to then be given back to Excel it's formatted back in that direction uh, the formatting or the presentation layer handles any data encryption that needs to be done to send the data decryption when the data is received uh, and again, don't confuse yourself with the presentation layer and how things look on the screen. Um, the session layer, that's responsible for communication between machines, between hosts. Uh, it sets up and terminates or destroys communication sessions. So when you need to connect to a server somewhere, the session layer handles making an, that connection and then terminating it when the connection is finished. Now, the transport layer controls your end-to-end -end communication. It handles breaking up or taking that large amount of data, breaking it into smaller chunks, sending those chunks to the other side, then reassembling the data at the other end. Um, depending on the protocol we're going to use, we're using at the transport layer, and we're going to talk about that in more detail, uh, it will handle the sequencing flow control. It could include error checking. The network layer is where we look at our path determination, how we get data from one location to another. This is our IP addressing area. This is where our network addresses reside or work. This is the uh, layer that routers used to determine the best path to get data from one network to another. The data link layer is the layer that interfaces these upper layers with the actual equipment, the physical stuff. The data link layer and next the physical layer are, the, are dependent on the type of network you're using. All of the other layers are totally independent of the type of network doesn't matter, but at the data link layer, we start dealing with and interfacing, working with the hardware itself, so it is dependent on the type of network we're using. And the physical layer, well, that's probably the easiest one to recognize. It is the layer that controls your media, whether you're transmitting over copper wire, fiber optic cable. It handles the signaling, the types of signals, the electrical or optical signaling that's used. So it is actually the physical network card, cabling and such. And, and that's usually the easiest thing for somebody to get a grasp on. Now in our next video, we will uh, continue looking at these layers, describing the different layers in more detail.